Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and this video is going to be a GT Sports driving tips and I'm going to give you 5 tips to get better results without driving quicker or as they say, getting good and hopefully you can use these tips to help you improve your driver rating and maintain a, a high driver rating So you might be asking who am I to be giving out driving tips well on the screen is the two accounts or the statistics if you like the two accounts that I run by uh, both Womble Leader and Fraggle Commander. Uh, I am certainly no alien, uh, but I am reasonably quick. However, I do often think that I can punch above my weight, uh, not through speed, but through kind of sensible driving, if you like. So, the tips I'm going to give you on here are things that I put into practice. I think they help me sort of uh, maintain my driver rating in the 60s. That gets me into sort of second and third split in the FIAs quite often. Uh, often up against faster drivers, but I think I can hold my own. So tip number one, uh, it's on the screen there, is consistency. Or if you like, race pace versus qualifying pace. Now everybody likes to drive on the limit. I know, you know a lot of people say I just want to drive flat out the entire race. But the reality is, driving out flat out for an entire race, you are going to start making mistakes. So in my opinion, when it comes to sort of longer races, Consistent, reasonable pace is a lot better than uh, occasionally quick laps with mistakes in between. Now certainly a lot of drivers go out there and drive on the limit for the entire race and that may well work for them but I think for the vast majority of drivers uh, it's hard to sort of drive for 30 minutes on the limit or 20 minutes on the limit without making any mistakes. So as I said to me, when it comes to a race just dial it back a few percent so I drive at 95%, brake fractionally early for the uh, corners, get on that throttle slightly later just to make sure you're not spinning the wheels as you exit corners, and I think that will be beneficial to your overall race. Uh, now the race that we've got on the screen here it was an FIA Nations race, I was in second split, so in pretty good company, uh, without a doubt. The two top drivers there are World Tour drivers, so I've been to World Tour events. But if you noticed in the first stint there, all our lap times fell within half a second. Uh, nothing spectacular in the lap times, we were on medium tyres, we moved on to the soft tyres for our second stint. And it's been pretty much the same over this second stint where we've lapped in the sort of low to mid 18s for the entire entirety of the stint. And that has allowed us to go from 12th place at the start, up into 7th place at the finish. So on the screen now is the after race lobby where we get to take a look at everyone's uh, sort of best laps and this is kind of what I want to demonstrate here you can see me in 7th place there my best laps are 118.149 and if you look around the drivers all around me uh, that is the slowest fastest lap uh, by a considerable margin and uh, as we scroll down a little bit further you'll actually see I had the slowest fastest lap in the race of any driver however we put in a lot of times in around about there Kept it nice and consistent, absolutely no mistakes in that race, it was a really good uh, consistent race for me. And I have found sort of throughout playing GT Sport over the last year that consistency outweighs raw speed with the odd mistake. So yeah, work on your race consistency, you can do that just by dialing it back a few percentage, not driving on the limit all the time, uh, and I think it will stand you in good stead. So moving on to tip number two, uh, to get you some better results without driving quicker that is, is to think about the bigger picture and in this specific example what I'm going to look at is uh, not fighting with drivers that are clearly quicker than you at that time in the race. So this is a FIA race, a manufacturer's race at Interlagos and we have been caught by a Dodge Viper behind us. Now we both just pitted the previous lap on this one here, we had moved on to racing hard tyres and I knew that driver was on racing soft tyres. So they've actually caught us by over two seconds, or the best part of two seconds, on the outlap. So as soon as it got close enough to me, I just moved gently aside, didn't lose any speed on the straight, but sort of took a worse line. That allowed them to overtake me, and we get the absolute, uh, absolute minimal time loss possible to letting that driver. Now we could have fought him down the straight into turn one, but all you end up doing is losing a second or a second and a half here. So, Long way to go in that race at the time, I think that was lap 8, we still had 10 laps to go. There was no point fighting them on that occasion. It's a similar story here, the GTR behind me has caught me quite quickly over the previous lap. 
I know that driver's quicker than me, I've raced him quite a lot of times. So into turn one, we gave him the signal to sort of make the move and uh, let the driver pass with absolute minimal time loss and we actually used this driver to drag us along for the next three laps in the slipstream and actually probably lap faster than we could have on our own and certainly uh, if we were trying to fight for the position. This example here was a fuel saving race, I knew I had to sort of use the slipstream or stay in the slipstream to stay with the pack, so again, never a driver came up behind me in the early stages of the race, it was clearly quicker, I was quite happy just to move aside and let them overtake me, make it nice and easy for them, break early out of the corner, I see the car on my left hand side, I know I can turn into the apex. So yeah, early on in a race, if it's a long race like an FIA race or a daily race C and that driver's clearly quicker, then sometimes it's better not to fight them and just let them go. Think of the bigger picture, it's all about getting to the end of the race quicker, uh, as quickly as possible at the end of the day. Okay, moving on to tip number three, and this is, I think this is quite an important one, is always know the pit loss of the race that you're in. Now this example here, we are in group two at Suzuka, and I have been stuck behind this driver in the opening stages of the race. Now I did know that the pit loss was just a fraction over four seconds for this one, so I seen that gap had just about reached where I needed to, to the driver behind me in third place, so into the pits we popped. Boys get to work, now I knew it was going to be close when we came out. Out the pits we come, we're looking behind, the driver behind has got much greater speed as going to turn one, but as uh, we managed to make it just in time, the gap comes down to about two tenths of a second. But we've got the job done, we're out, still in second place, we've got some clear air to start using our speed. And we used that to our advantage, we actually did quite an unusual strategy in this one where we actually stopped four times. Uh, but we went on to pick up the win and it all came down to making that early pit stop and seeing that the gap was there to get that pit stop done uh, and be able to start using our raw speed on this occasion. Uh, now I always do strategy guides for daily race C, I always include the pit loss if a pit stop is going to be necessary. So to check them out, uh, my strategy guides out if you want to sort of find out the pit loss for any daily race C that is on. Moving on to tip number four, and it is going to sound like a cliche, but I always say never give up. Now, this race here, you can see the start has bugged out. We are qualified in an 18th place, and 17th place has not moved off with the rest of the cars. Uh, eventually, they do. They get away, but we've lost the pack. We actually lose the slipstream to the car in front of us as well. We're down in 18th place. We're in, looks like we're in for a bit of a torrid time, but... I always say never give in, because you never know what could happen. And enough when you're at a track like Dragon Trail Seaside as we are here, and it features something like the Chicane of Death, then that probably holds true even more. So we move forward to lap 9 on this race, we're still down in 18th place, we've made the one and only pit stop that we're going to make, and we've slowly catched the cars in front. But again, it still looks like we're in for a terrible result, but as we come towards the Chicane of Death, the yellow flags are out. And if something major has happened, we go past one car that's in the wall, we go past a Lamborghini that's moving very slow, a Renault Megane that looks like it's got a broken engine, same with a Dodge Viper that looks like it has a broken engine. And as we come out the last corner here, this Mercedes also has a broken engine and we've gone from 18th place up to 12th place, courtesy of 5 cars that have put it in the wall in an instant in the chicane of death and a car that has pitted. So now we have the potential of pulling maybe a little bit of a result from a race that looked like it was lost at the very, even before it started if you like. So we come to the last lap, we're still in our 12th place and we have a bit of chaos going on in front of us, the Corvette in front of us has got absolutely no tyres, they've tried to do a no stopper for some reason. As we come into the chicane of death, anything can happen at this point. The Corvette hits the wall, the Dodge Viper managed to go around here. Now you're about to see me send the Dodge Viper in to the boonies, now I can assure you that was not me but the car behind me that missed its braking point. Now, I very much expected to get a penalty at this point, but as we come out the last corner, we're in 10th place, and all of a sudden, we've pulled a reasonable result from a race that looked all but lost, even before it started, as I said before. So, yep, yeah, it is a cliche, but never give up. 
Uh, I've found similar situations in many, many races where I've always looked lost and all you want to do is just give up and maybe start another race. And uh, as the race progresses, things happen. You don't get involved in them and you can sometimes pull a result out of the bag that looked a long way away at the start of a race. So tip number five is uh, don't go seeking a revenge. Now, we all get annoyed by the driving standards of other drivers in this game. Uh, particularly with the penalty system being a bit poor at the moment. Sort of unscrupulous driving can go unpunished way too often. And it can be very tempting to sort of try and take matters into your own hands when somebody's kind of annoyed you. Now, in this instance here, that Greek driver, we've had a bit of a run-in in in the previous race, and then when we've came to overtake him in the following race, he's made a couple of dodgy manoeuvres in front of me, he's going to do another one up here into turn one, and I lose my head and go, right, I'm taking you out. But all it results in doing is that I ruin the driver in front of it, the French driver, I end up ruining his race, and uh, he sees what I do here to the Greek driver. He takes me to be the the bad guy, and uh, as the sort of race proceeds, he decides that I'm the idiot. I'm the one that needs kind of taken out, and he's going to go try and ruin my race here. And just completely unnecessary. Uh, his race has been ruined by my behaviour. My race is about to be ruined that as well. We cause chaos here and to turn 4 into Lagos as you can see. And the sort of ironic thing about it is the Greek driver who I felt started it all and I was annoyed with has just escaped everything and he's up in fourth place and he's actually going to get a good result. So yeah, as hard as it is, uh, if drivers want to drive like that, I know it's so hard just to ignore it but it really is for the best because if I had just ignored that I'd still be in 6th place in this race at the very least, I'd still be out for a good result, but instead I've been taken out because the French guy's annoyed with me, probably rightly so, and we're down in what, 12th, 13th place here. Now if you're looking to improve your DR, that is not the way to do it. Uh, and also, you can quite easily get a target put in your back for this because people don't, other drivers just see what you do, they don't know that you're doing stuff for any other reason. Anyway, a couple of bonus tips here, as uh, quite often with uh, these daily races there is a tyre requirement out, I'm still seeing a lot of drivers picking up 20 second penalties. If you want to know how to take out what the tyre requirement is for a race, then race details from the race uh, entry screen, and you'll not fall victim for that one again. As I said, you still see a lot of drivers falling for that early on in uh, uh, the week. Uh, and another little tip, uh, bonus tip is uh, something I think you could do is make use of the, the custom race feature in this game. Now a lot of people think that the online physics and the offline physics are completely different. It's not true, I can assure you 100% as long as you set a custom race up in the right way that it will feel exactly the same as going online. Now the two settings you have to remember are uh, the setting that says grip, red, dot, on, wet, track, edge. You need to set that from low to real. Now you can see I'm just quickly setting a race up here. What I'm, the race I'm setting up here for is the Autopolis race that was the FIA race just recently. And so the turn boost off because I, I hope the AI cars will just uh, get a boost and you will get a boost if you fall in a second. As you can see we've changed that grip reduction setting to real. You can set the penalties, everything. There we've got that race set up now for the race at Autopolis. You can move yourself anywhere you want to be on the grid. And uh, then you can just get the race started. Now what's quite good about this is that uh, you can just practice in race conditions without any other cars around you. A lot of people will go to lobbies, I know, but in this case you can just, uh, you can not have any traffic around you and sort of see what kind of pace you've got. Now one thing you have to remember to do, and you just see me do it there, is go into settings and make sure you set BOP on your car. Anyway, that it has been five tips. Uh, that I use, with a couple of bonus tips that I use to sort of uh, keep my uh, driver rating reasonably high. Uh, I still use all these to this day. One thing I do need to work on though is that I'm getting a little bit antsy in races. Uh, 
your drivers are doing daft things to me. I'm going looking for revenge sometimes, and uh, it's just it's not a good idea. So just to recap, tip number one: consistency. Work on that race pace. Don't try to drive flat out the entire race. Rain it in a couple of percentage. If you can put in good consistent laps for the whole race, you'll get better results than driving flat out and making the odd mistake, I can assure you. Tip number two, we had a uh, look at the bigger picture. you got a driver who's two seconds a lap faster than you behind you. There is no point fighting them, they're going to get past you eventually. Uh, you'll just cost yourself a lot of time trying to defend it, and they may well just get to the point where they, they get so annoyed with you defending so hard that they'll just brush you out of their way anyway. Tip number three, know that pit loss. This can be crucial to your strategy. You can sort of get the undercut on drivers because you can see the gaps there to make a pit stop and get out in clean air and use your fresh tyres to their maximum extent. Tip number four, as I said, it is a cliche, but uh, never give up. You never know what can happen in a race. You can probably still salvage your result, or possibly salvage your result, because uh, you just never know what's going to happen later on in a race. And obviously quitting from a race is just going to uh, give you a DR loss anyway, whereas if you carry on and maybe sort of pick up a few positions, then you can minimise that loss. And tip number five, don't go seeking revenge. As I said just a, a few moments ago, you'll just lose out in the end, uh, because drivers will... You, you'll just make yourself a target. If drivers are dirty, if you're, you're trying to fight with a driver who's dirty, or try and play a dirty driver at their own game, They'll probably be better at it than you anyway, and uh, they'll just come looking for you, or make your life difficult next time you see them in a race. So yeah, that's uh, hopefully these tips have been helpful. Hopefully you can utilise them to try and uh, improve your driver rating, or sort of uh, get it a little bit higher, or get better results. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, I appreciate them all. Leave a comment, let me know if you use any of the tips that I've put in here uh, to sort of improve your results. I'd uh, like to hear from you. I try to reply to as many comments as possible. But once again, thank you very much for watching and I shall see you on the next one. Goodbye now.